Hello and welcome to Rock the Casbah Block 21. This is one of the more striking blocks in the collection and I love it because as striking as it is, it is also incredibly easy and quick to create. This entire project or this entire block was only about 40 minutes in stitching. You can see it has a mirrored reverse effect with then that purple arrow segmenting that through the middle. So let's come and see how we create this. First thing that we're going to do is stitch down our embroiderer's felt using wash away thread. The reason that we use wash away thread is because we do not want those threads showing in the project once we have completed. And once that stitch down is complete, I'm going to come through and excuse my arm here whilst I trim away the excess fabric from around that embroiderer's felt. Now, if you cannot find embroiderer's felt, what you're looking for is a really thin parlon. Just something that is going to give the stitches something to form around. And we'll come through. You can see I'm using a fairly large pair of scissors because I need to get through the layers of the or the layer of the embroiderer's felt here. Once that's done, I'm going to lay my fabric on top, and that is pressed fabric. Um, so I've ironed and I've set it with a little bit of um, spray starch. And then we're going to stitch out colorway two. And colorway two is going to come through and show us where to place. Um, sorry, colorway two is going to come through and is going to hold down that design. And we're still doing that with the water soluble thread. So now we can change from water soluble thread over to our first color and for me that first color is my dark teal. And what I want to do is stitch colorway three which is going to show the outline of where I need to place my applique object. I'm going to take my fabric lay that over the outline and stitch down colorway 4 which is going to hold that down. Now this is one of the tricks of the Rocklick Hasbar collection. When you trim away the excess fabric I only want you to trim it away from inside the block. From the outside of the block, what we want to do is come through and still leave about a somewhere between a quarter or half an inch of fabric. And that will then go into the seams and give you a perfect look to your block. And you can see there I've just taken that middle part out. And now colorway five is going to stitch the inside of this applique area. And we've got two options here. You can either applique another piece of fabric on top or you can use this outline and trim the fabric that we already have in there. Either way is absolutely fine. And you can see what I'm going to do here is actually just trim that applique fabric from the inside. And I've done that because my fabric behind is, you know, fine looking. And 
I felt that I could easily do that trim away. You'll notice that I have moved the trim away to a flat, really wide surface just so that I would have plenty of room to do the trim. And I'm, of course, using my curved tip scissors. Colorway 6, if you're using that applique, um, stitching on white, we'll hold that applique fabric down. Um, alternatively, it's just another stitch to hold all the fabric in and stops things from moving even more. And then colorway seven is going to come through and do a satin stitch right the way around this applique cutout. Now, one of the questions that I have had is, could I then use this cutout on the reverse side? The answer is actually no, because you always cut out a little bit smaller than you than you need from the inside, and it just would not work. And you can see how crappily I cut mine out as well. Okay, now you'll see that I appear to be stitching on quite a high speed here. Don't let that fool you. I'm actually stitching on about 500 stitches a minute. I've just sped up the video so that I don't bore you. And what you'll see with this satin stitch is not only do you get that sexy satin finish but we also then do a triple stitch around it as well now whilst all this stitching is happening it is a great time to come through and um prep your backing fabric and by prep i mean come through iron your backing fabric um, just make sure your wadding is ready to go. When it comes to wadding, I am using um, a polyester wadding. And the reason I'm using that is because it is what I have on hand. I do love watching the machine stitch though. I just find it incredibly soothing. Um, and I'm constantly entranced by watching the designs actually stitch out. When it comes to fabrics, one of the things that I've loved seeing everybody do so far with the Rock the Casbah collection is all of the different colours that people have used and just how different everybody's blocks therefore look. in the live events that we're hosting each month. Um, you'll notice that I'm working on a dark background with um, citrus colored fabrics just to be different. And I'm doing that oh, with a five inch size, whereas while I'm here, I'm using the nine inch size. And we're going to come through. We're almost finished our satin stitches. Now, as always, um, I am using an 1175 needle. If you have an issue with your needle um, or things are not threading, things are not, um, you know, for whatever reason, um, use what needle you personally prefer. I used about three or four needles on the entire Rock the Casbah quilt. Now what we're doing at the moment is the machine is now switching around and it's doing the triple stitch around the edge of that embroidery. And what that does is it just finishes the stitch off and gives it a really professional look to the design. 
when it comes to thread choices I've chosen polyester thread whatever thread you choose to use is totally up to you um, I like polyester because it is strong it's color fast and it goes um, the best on my on a range of different machines so we'll do the last of the triple stitch coming around here and then what we're going to do is we're going to come through and basically repeat this fleur-de-lis on the other side of our block Okay, so I am going to stitch colorway 8, which is going to show me where I want to place my fabric down. When you are looking at applique fabrics, try to press them as you go. You will just get a better result. And I'm just going to come through and lay that fabric over. I generally choose to not use my cutter. Um, and by cutter I mean um, whether it be a circuit, a silhouette, a scan and cut, um, an artistic cutter, all of those sorts of things. Um, I generally don't like using them for cutting fabric. And the reason is that I feel I can be stingier and get a better result if I lay the fabric out myself. If you do like to use the cutter, then you will also have software that will allow you to take the embroidery design and put it into a cut file as well. Okay. And squeeze scissors because these scissors are curved tip and they are just the best for trimming away the applique. And then we will come on and we are now up to colorway 10. And not only is this going to um, do that same applique stitching around this part of the design, it is also going to do a decorative satin stitch between the two pieces of fabric so between that um, teal triangle and the white triangle as always when you purchase a rock the casbah design you get not only the five different sizes the video access to the videos the instructions yada 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 you get the um, quilting design as well and the quilting design that I've used this month is a chicken wire quilting design which I think is kind of cool what it does mean in this instance is our quilting is going to be an extra color because of the way excuse me because of the way the blocks are set up I've quilted the teal side of the block in teal and the white side of the block in white now you can change any of these that you wish um, one of the joys of this project and something that I hope everybody will do is make it their own and do what they would like. I have had um, questions asking if you have to do the quilting in the block. No, you don't. You can stop the design after the embroidery has finished stitching down and then you can just join your blocks together and quilt it however you want. I've also had somebody question whether you could stop the design, join it, baste it together and then quilt it 
using the custom quilting designs. Now, philosophically, the answer to that is yes, you can. Realistically, the answer to that is it would be a lot of hard work and there are absolutely no guarantees that the design is going to work in that manner. Um, if it is something that you wanted to do, I would be practicing very, very carefully before I tried that. Simply because the weight of the quilt is going to be a hell of a lot for the machine to manage. So we're coming through and we're doing our satin stitching around here. And I just like the simplicity of this block. There's something elegant about it. Now, another question that I get is, I've only got a small hoop. How can I make a larger quilt? Easiest way to do it is to duplicate the number of blocks that you're doing. So instead of doing one of this block, do two. Just change the colors. So in my case, I might do this with either the deep pink or the wine as an alternate block, which would leave it looking totally different. And it's amazing how much color can change the perception of what we are seeing. And so we're coming through with our... Um, triple stitching now. For those of you who have asked the question, I am using the Janome 15,000. Um, it has a 9 by 9 inch hoop, which is just something that I adore, and it's just a beautiful stitching machine. You'll also notice here that I've got my cutaway stabilizer and you can see that I've used T-pins to hold that stabilizer taunt. Um, a trick that does only work for um, for cutaway stabilizer is to use those T-pins and it just assists in helping the design to not suck in as you go. So what I'm doing now is this is a decorative satin stitch just between those two colors and I've used a diamond just to replicate what we've done here. Now next thing we're going to do is I'm going to change my threads and I want to use my deep wine color thread. Excuse the hand again. And colorway 11 is going to come through and do a beautiful sexy satin. Um, I'm, I'm calling it almost an arrow, a double pointed spearhead sort of a sort of a thing. And that's also going to cover up part of that join. I love applique. What I don't want with applique is to be able to see those ragged edges all the time. Even if I'm using a decorative stitch, you will notice that I use a decorative stitch that is large enough to cover off the entire um, section that I'm stitching. And I do just love how dramatic the wine colored um, thread looks here. I enjoy using a satin stitch simply because it gives that luscious, to me, sexy look. And then we're re replicating on the other side. Uh, 
when it comes to what bobbin I use, I use a pre-wound bobbin simply because I can get more into the um, into the bobbin that way. And we sell the pre-wound bobbins that we use. It is a really thin monofilament. Um, and yeah, for me, it's just simple. A lot of people say they were told not to use anything but their particular brand, machine's brand of, um, you can see at the back here, I'm just pulling apart my chair, ready to start working on it. Um, not to use anything but their own brand's bobbin. That's just because your machine has been set to the tension for that. If you reset the tension on the bobbin, all's good. And now I'm going to change to my deep pink thread. And I want to stitch colorway 12, which is the last of my detail stitching on this block. And that just adds a cute little pop of color. Always nice to watch somebody rip apart furniture in the background, isn't it? Okay, so now we're up to putting our backing on. I'm going to come through, place my wadding on the back, over the outline, put wash away thread in the needle, and stitch out colorway 13. And this is going to hold down the thread for the, um, or this is going to hold down the wadding. Once the wadding's secure, I want to come back, remove the hoop from the machine again, and trim away, once again with those larger scissors, all of the excess wadding. And we do this because we do not want the bulk in the seams. It is an absolute pain in the neck to have that excess bulk there. And it's much more difficult to trim away as well once you've completed the seam. So we'll come through, trim that excess, and then place our backing fabric, which I've pressed onto the back, and stitch colorway 14 which is going to hold the backing fabric down. Again, this is with the wash away thread. Now, remember I told you that we were going to use two colors of quilting. I'm now going to put that light teal thread back on and stitch out colorway 15 which is the quilting design on the teal. If you want the quilting to show up a little bit more on this, you might want to do both sides in the white. Totally up to you. The quilting design comes to you as a freebie and you can use it um, so you get the quilting design block that you can use to quilt whatever you would like. And you also get the continuous quilting version as well. And here we are, we've just come out of the last colorway, which is colorway 16. And we'll do the last set of stitching. Excuse me as I just bump that a little. Okay, let's have a look at our finished block. So you can actually see how gorgeous the quilting looks in this. 
Um, and I think that's a really dramatic and beautiful block. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this block as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. As always, contact me at sales at Julie Hall Designs if you've got any questions. Until next time, have a stitching day. Bye.